Mr. Secretary, do you expect most states to apply for waivers and will the proficiency standards be postponed down the road or just totally done away with it? Uh, my hope is the vast majority of states will, will apply. And we'll see. And uh, again, um, we'll have a very high bar and just because they apply doesn't mean we'll, we'll approve everyone. But over the past three or four days, I've probably talked to 35, 40 governors and I've yet to talk to a governor who's happy with the current law and wasn't interested in, in, in some movement. So, uh, you know, I anticipate a lot, of, a lot of interest in this as we move forward. I also want to be very clear that I think whatever we do will hopefully just be a bridge or transition to ultimately Congress fixing the law for the country. And that's the ultimate goal. This in no way impedes their progress or slows them down. In fact, it might actually accelerate that. And again, I think what, what this state did, just to you know, use this example around the country, not just because I'm here, but uh, I, my numbers might not be exact, but Tennessee, like many states, historically lowered the bar. Uh, we're saying that 91% of students were proficient in math. Tennessee raised the bar and went from 91% to like 34%. And that's tough medicine, but guess what? It's the truth. And we want to reward a lot more states that are willing to tell the truth. When they raise the bar, I think those achievement gaps we knew about, those achievement gaps actually doubled because you saw the real disparities there. And that honesty, frankly, that brutal honesty, we need a lot more of that in this country, and that's what we're going to continue to reward. Mr. 